Today we're going to take a look at the IPVM camera calculator, including floor plans, PTZs, 180 cameras, camera blind spots, and much more. Starting out with a blank project, we add cameras by clicking the Add Camera button in the upper left-hand corner. You can also right-click on the map and add camera here as well. By default, the calculator adds a generic camera which supports the ability to change resolution, distance of the field of view, width of the field of view, changing your unit of measurement from imperial to metric, and some advanced settings, which allows us to change the imager size. Changing imager and focal length will automatically change the field of view of the camera. So if we set this to a 35 millimeter with a 12 millimeter lens, it returns a 112 degree field of view. So it will perform uh, calculations based upon that imager and focal length. The field of view can be moved around by grabbing the person object and placing that wherever you need it. And the field of view can also be manually adjusted for generic cameras or any verifocal cameras uh, just by dragging the circle icons in and out. And the camera itself can be moved just by dragging the camera. Over on the right hand side, the calculator supports a simulated view, which where it is available will display Google Street View images. So as we move the camera around and where it's facing, Google Street View will automatically update to display where the camera is viewing. There are also preloaded scenes, eight of them, uh, and a ninth preloaded scene, which is just a blank white screen, which can be selected. But these are stock images that can be used for the simulated view. Uh, we have ones of the parking lot, and these will automatically adjust based upon the field of view that is configured within the camera. So a very narrow view or a very wide view. The calculator also offers adding in specific cameras. So there are over 10,000 camera models currently loaded in the calculator from dozens of manufacturers, obviously thousands of models. You can select you know, from your favorite manufacturer or you can look for specific specified cameras. So let's say you want a 4K bullet camera that narrows it down to 31 cameras. And let's say we need uh, 50 meters of IR. So now we're down to 18 cameras. So from here, click on one of the cameras. It'll, uh, in most cases, show a preview image of that camera and click on select this camera. And now it will update that model so from a generic camera to a specific model. There's a change in the horizontal field of view it is now not completely open. It is limited to the specified range uh, of that camera from the manufacturer. So you can drag and drop from there. Uh, also, if you now drag those circles, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, it'll tell you that the camera model is restricted uh, based upon the range of that lens on the camera. There are also 360 and 180 degree fisheye cameras at a new camera. And let's pull in a 360 degree camera. Just scroll down and uh, select this Panasonic. Now, some cameras will have an option if we go, you know, in this case, a 180 or 360. Uh, many cameras will have an option to wall mount or ceiling mount, and that will provide uh, basically two options that can be selected for that camera, uh, like this one here has a 180 and a 360 degree option, whether it's wall uh, or ceiling mounted. In this case, we'll select the 360 degree option. And now we're going to show a feature the calculator offers called duplicate camera. So we're gonna duplicate this camera. It's gonna create a copy of that Vivotech model. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna select the 180 degree option. So we can see the differences here of the 180 degree fisheye, let's say this one is wall mounted versus a 360 degree fisheye, let's say this one is ceiling mounted, the differences in the field of view coverage. The calculator also supports uh, displaying the IR spec range for that camera. And so like if we look at this camera, this red line 
this red line and this red line. So each camera has uh, IR capabilities. Uh, this generic camera does not. And so if we go onto this camera under advanced lens and IR settings, we can see here the imager, the uh, focal length on that camera, and we can toggle that display IR spec range on and off by clicking here. It's a camera specific setting. So if you just want it turned off on this one camera, you can leave it on on that, or uh, you have to go in and manually disable it on all your cameras. The calculator also offers floor plans. So in the middle here, we can click on add floor plan. It's going to give us an option to add in a JPEG bitmap PNG PDF file. We are going to hit browse, select a JPEG floor plan. It will tell you the file size, uh, anything over five megabytes. It might give a warning, the file type, it'll check and make sure you're uploading one of the supported files and the dimensions, uh, again, anything over 5,000 pixels in either dimension, it will automatically scale that image down. Click upload, and now the calculator switches to the floor plan mode. It's going to allow us to scale this floor plan. So we drag our scale between two known points on the map. Uh, we're just gonna say in this case that this is six feet and we click scale floor plan. It will automatically zoom in to the closest zoom level for that camera. We have the option to rotate our floor plan. So let's rotate this here. And now we can uh, add cameras to our floor plan. Cameras and floor plans have the option to be locked. So if we want to make sure that we don't accidentally move or adjust this floor plan as we're working on it, if we have it in the location that we want it, we can right click, lock the floor plan. Uh, and now if we try to make any changes, we'll see the floor plan is locked. Uh, you have to right click to unlock the floor plan if you want to make any changes to it. There is also an option to scale the floor plan. So if we got our floor plan scale uh, incorrect, we can right click and rescale the floor plan. Uh, again, selecting a known distance. In this case, I'm gonna just select a, an exterior door, set that to three feet and adjust the scale. Uh, so now we have it the correct scale uh, that we want for our project. There is some navigational options in the upper right hand corner where you can switch between your different cameras and all project items. So we can switch between our floor plan and our different cameras so that we can again switch between uh, just everything that's within our project. You can also right click on the map and click view all cameras uh, and it will adjust the field of view so that the every camera can be viewed. The calculator offers a feature for changing your camera color. So we can select our cameras, select a different camera color cone. So if you have a, maybe a, a different color that you want to use for each model, or you have different camera colors for exterior versus interior cameras, and the camera color will follow if you duplicate a camera, we can see that that uh, color will follow the duplicated camera. Uh, so you don't have to ch keep on changing it as you're adding in a bunch of the same camera model. The camera calculator also supports displaying the blind spot underneath the camera based on the camera height and tilt on the map. This is a global project setting. So if we click show camera blind spot, we'll see all of our cameras will uh, update to show that. By default, the camera setting is uh, 10 feet high for every camera and that is an individual camera setting. So if we say, just set this to 50 feet, we can see that the camera height has been changed, uh, but the scene height is at the distance uh, that is defined up in the upper right hand corner or where this person is. That scene height will be the top of the field of view for that camera. So now we have a tilt of minus 23.33 degrees. If we increase our scene height, we will see that our blind spot 
would increase dramatically. And especially if we narrowed our field of view, we can see that blind spot really start to come into play for that field of view. Again, even on a, a 10 foot high camera, we can see uh, that, that our uh, distance to blind spot is 11 feet uh, and, and will even increase as our field of view becomes more narrow. Again, our camera distance to blind spot is 18 feet. That is again the distance at which the lower edge of the field of view will see the ground. The camera calculator also offers the option to uh, export your project once it's created. There are six different formats, snapshot, zip, CSV, PDF, Word doc, and PowerPoint. I'm just gonna click on a Word doc export. Lower left hand corner, it'll give you a status. And then we're gonna open the project with Microsoft Word. And here it will lay out the project. The first page in first view will always include an overview. And then each camera, it will list out the camera model, the little camera image, and the specifications of that camera. And scroll through and you'll see uh, each camera has its own, uh, own layout on the page. This is where the option for the blank uh, view can be useful if you don't want to use um, you know, one of the fisheye or, or any of the preview images, you can set that to the blank image to not use the simulated view. Another navigation feature that is uh, offered is the ability to hide the uh, right hand controls. So if you want to just uh, take a screenshot or, or grab a, a view without the uh, overview uh, and control panel on the right hand side, you can close that. The Google Map overlay can be switched between a satellite, a map view, or a blank view. So in the case where you are working with a floor plan, the blank view can uh, often be a useful uh, view where it doesn't really matter what is on the Google Map at that situation. You just want to work off a floor plan. Uh, the satellite view obviously gives you uh, the satellite overlay, which will uh, depend on the area where the project happens, uh, the level of zoom or the quality of the street view imagery uh, will vary depending on, um, you know, if it's a rural area or suburban area that has, you know, generally better uh, image quality. And lastly, there is the map view, which will show street names. It is also filtered for only showing government buildings, churches, uh, medical centers, streets, uh, bus stops, that type of thing. Uh, it won't show businesses uh, generally or, or, you know, any sort of for-profit, you know, uh, coffee shops or anything like that. And so we'll give you a little bit of a cleaner view where you can place cameras and, and see the street names. We can also add in labels. So if we add in a label, it'll place that label in the middle of the view. We can select the label. We can change the name. Uh, to let's say camera one and that can be anything it can also be uh, just parking lot camera you can control the size of the the text the size of the label by adjusting the slider here the uh, fill and text color can be changed as well either to match the camera or to however you want it customized and looking at all project items you do have all the cameras that were added to the project, your labels and the floor plan uh, can be selected uh, right through this all project items interface. You can share your projects, clicking on share. It will create a permalink which can be copied and emailed, uh, sent to other people to share your project. You can clone a project. Um, we talked about exporting and adding floor plans. And lastly, the calculator supports using a uh, polyline tool. So there are a couple different drawing tools. There's a you know rectangle tool. So you can add in a rectangle, um, sort of change its color and outline if you want to mark an area where cameras, uh, you know, you don't want them viewing. The polyline tool is pretty useful. Uh, while it can be used to draw out a customized shape and have an outline of an area again where you know maybe you don't want uh, cameras to be viewed or just to you know demark something you know on the map itself the camera calculator also supports an option for using the polyline as a measuring tool clicking on the map 
clicking on it again and then clicking a third time where the second point was created will do a single segment polyline where it sh will show the distance uh, of that polyline. Uh, it cannot be used on a dual segment or greater polyline. So as soon as I add in a third segment, uh, the polyline will not give you the full measurement. Uh, it would be only for a single segment. You can see that distance there. That is a detailed overview of the IPVM camera calculator. Thanks for watching.